Let's make this clean, simple game day poster in Photoshop. So I'm gonna start by dragging in this clouds sky background texture. I think I found this on unsplash.com a while back. Great free resource for textures and images if you haven't used it yet. I'm just dropping a mask on this in the bottom right. You can click that mask icon. I'm just gonna fade out this bottom part. So if you hit G for your paint bucket tool and go to the gradient tool, we can click and drag while holding shift on this bottom edge. And what we're doing is we're putting a, a soft black to transparent mask just on the bottom there. So we're masking that out. Now this example is gonna be a Minnesota wind chill game day graphic. So I'm gonna drop on a gradient map just by going to my adjustment layers. And let's use the wind chill blue color. Let's do a, a blue to white gradient map. So I'm just eyedroppering my wind chill color and we can adjust this once we have our player cutout in the design. But looking at something like this, let's drag in our player cutout next. So I have this Minnesota wind chill Chicago Union kind of double player cutout photo I took at Chicago's last home game. Very happy with how it turned out. So I figured I'd build a poster around it. But right now I'm just sizing it up with command T to transform it, making sure it fits how I want it to. Once we add in some other elements, we can always resize it later on. So we're gonna use this white bottom part as kind of the floor of the design. So let's give some foot shadows to our cutout. I'm gonna make a new layer, hit B for my brush tool. We'll set the foreground color to black. Now I'm just gonna bring down my brush settings. So I'm using like a flat, very faint brush. Let's bring the flow down to like 6%. And then I'm using the bracket keys to adjust the size. And I'm just gonna start painting on where it makes sense that foot shadows would be. Obviously the parts that are in contact with the ground, those are gonna be shaded darkest. So like his foot, his hand, we can brush on there. And then the other feet on the left side here. And again on the toe, then we can kind of like fade it out from the toe going back, and then a little further back, we have the other player's foot. And you'd probably have like some shading in between there. And so those are kind of our main points of contact. And now I'm just gonna bring in some additional shading where the other body parts would be casting some shadow. So let's go slightly bigger brush. I'm gonna make a new layer just for more control. And we can start brushing like so in these spaces. So a slightly fainter feel, and maybe we have kind of one bigger overarching shadow kind of going below everything. We do have this arm coming forward. So maybe we have like slight shadow coming out towards the viewer as well. Pretty happy with this basic shadow placement. If you ever want to accentuate it even more, we can always duplicate one of these shadow layers. So if we wanted to go a little darker with the points of contact, just hit command J to duplicate that first layer. And maybe we also want to Make the second one a bit more pronounced. Group all these into a folder, call it shadow. We can group it with our cutout and just call the whole thing cutout. So now let's bring this into camera raw filter and start messing with the details of this image. So go up to filter, camera raw filter. And then we'll start with the light panel here. Let's just make some basic adjustments. This is gonna depend on your photo and what looks good to you. Generally speaking, this is kind of the approach I take. I try to brighten it up with boosting the shadows and lowering the highlights. And I oftentimes will up the whites and decrease the blacks. Color, I don't wanna affect there, but I will mess with the texture and clarity. Just get a little bit more detail. And then going down to the color mixer. So right now the skin tones are looking very yellow to me, almost like a golden hour feel. I want them a lot more red leaning so we can maybe even desaturate them a little bit we can play with these some more at the end of the design as well but I want to get a little bit more red into the skin tones and then as far as like these other colors like in the shorts I feel like there might be some magenta back there some purples we don't need blues obviously are affecting the jerseys a good bit so I won't touch those aquas we can probably get rid of greens two yellows. Yeah, it kind of keeps the disc at a, a neutral grayscale color rather than the reflective yellow. And so we'll stop there, hit okay. The shadows are maybe looking a little bit harsh for me. So I'm just gonna take the shadow folder and lower the opacity a little bit. And now because we have this blue in the jersey, I'm gonna eyedropper that to change the color of this background. So it's more consistent throughout the design. So let's go back into our gradient map. We'll click on this blue and we'll just pick 
a value that is more on the jersey. So that feels about right. Let's move on to the text of our design. So I'm just gonna collapse this folder. Let's make a new layer, T for your type tool. We'll set the foreground color to white. And let's just type out game day. The font we're gonna use is called Armada. Armada bold compressed. We can set the spacing between characters to zero and then blow this way up. So the margins I'm gonna use for this design, we'll use like a three box margin from either side. So let's size this up again with Command T for transform. And now what we're gonna do is extend this text downward. So we're just gonna drop down these like lowest points of the text. To do that, I'm gonna duplicate the text layer. Let's turn the bottom one off. This is just kind of our backup layer. And now if you right click and go to convert to shape, we are now gonna have these anchor points on the text. If you hit A for your direct selection tool, you can see this is now a shape, which means we can like mess with specific points. These anchor points, if we click and drag to select these bottom ones, they can be moved just by clicking and dragging downward. So now we have this like nice overlap, yet still have a very readable text image in addition to our player cutouts. So maybe we move this whole text down a little bit more just to give ourselves some space at the top and we'll now add in some complementary text at the top of the design. So I'm gonna hit T for my type tool, again on a new layer. Let's switch this font to Montserrat Bold. We're gonna bring the font size down to 18 and we'll space it out ever so slightly. So let's type out Chicago Union versus Minnesota Windchill. This is where our game information is gonna go just above the game day text. We'll hit enter, we will type out July 15th 2024 when I'm recording this video. And I'm just gonna justify this so it's in line again with that three box margin. And maybe we'll take it like about a box up from the game day text. Let's hit Command J to duplicate this layer and let's just bring it over to the right. We're gonna right justify this type over here and line it up again with the right side of game day. Now we're gonna type out Seafoam Stadium. Uh, let's do the time also. So we'll hit return, 7 p.m. Central. Maybe we want a little bit more spacing between these lines, so I'm just gonna select both of these text layers, holding shift and upping the space a little bit. And I wanna make this in line again with that three box margin from the top. So let's bring that up. There, so we've got exactly three boxes on all sides here, and we'll also bring up our game day text so everything feels evenly spaced. Maybe something around there. Now we've got this room at the bottom. We're just gonna drop in our logos of the teams just to cap off this composition. So let's drag in the Windchill logo, and we'll drag in the Chicago Union logo. Let's make sure these are sized correctly. Now we'll select both of them, Command T again and size them both down a good amount. So we've got our logos. I'm gonna drop a, a verse circle in between them. So we've got like Chicago Union verse Minnesota Windchill. Let's make a new layer, drop our ellipse tool. Let's drag it out while holding shift to keep it as a circle and can make it a bit smaller. I'm just gonna take one of my text layers that I already have holding option. You can click and drag a layer to duplicate it. So I've got this extra Chicago Union layer. Let's just type out VS and put it in the middle of this circle. And I wanna center the VS in this circle. So I'm gonna hold Command, click on this little layer thumbnail of our ellipse. And then with the move tool selected, click our align icons up at the top. Maybe we want a little bit more space around there. And we can select both these layers, collapse them into their own folder. We'll call it VS. We will take the VS layer and move it in between our logos and we'll center it again vertically and horizontally. And then we can move the logos apart to get this very simple layout of logo versus logo. Now let's group this whole section into its own folder, holding shift, selecting these layers, and clicking our group folder. We'll call this matchup. And again, just bringing up my grids. And by the way, the shortcut is command apostrophe. I've got a whole video on grids, guides, and margins you can check out. I'm just approximating that three box margin from the bottom. So we've got consistent spacing on all sides. I think the player cutout, I can move up a little bit and maybe shrink down. Obviously we want it as like the featured part of the image, but this design has like a lot of good 
breathing room and white space that I don't want to make anything feel too crammed. Now let's move on to our finishing touches for this design. First, I'm going to keep tweaking the coloring a bit for our player cutout. So let's bring in a selective color adjustment layer, and I'm going to clip this to our cutouts by holding Option and hovering in that space between layers and clicking. We can really boost the reds by lowering the cyans, and it's still looking a little bit on the yellow side, so trying to get rid of those yellows and keep those skin tones popping nicely. We can also go to the blues and mess with the tones of these jerseys. So on the Union jersey in particular, you can kind of lighten it up, maybe make it feel like it fits in the design a bit better. We can also kind of spotlight our cutout a little bit more if we take uh, just a white soft brush and drop it right behind everything. So just making a new layer, let's go to our brush tool and we can bring this brush back to normal. We can bring the flow back up to 100 and set the foreground color to white, but just like a soft brightness right behind everything kind of draws the eye in further to our main cutout. So we can also add an inner glow to kind of reflect the idea that there is kind of a spotlight behind them. You just go into your FX, inner glow, and I've got the blend mode set to overlay. You could try it out with screen, but this is just gonna make kind of like a soft white edge to, or kind of like a, a brighter edge in general to our cutout. So you can see like a before and after just brings everything in a little bit more. I realize when I add the selective color layer, it is changing the color of our Minnesota guys jersey, so it's not totally equal to the background value anymore. I'm just gonna unclip this layer, and now we have a more consistent feel of this blue color because it is also affecting the background. I think I still wanna ease up on this floor shadow too, so let's go back in and decrease the opacity a little bit more. I think the inner glow because we're seeing it like on the bottom of the shoe, that's making it more of like a stark contrast and, and less of a believable shadow. So let's take this inner glow, let's right click it and create layer. And now let's mask out the parts that would be like touching the shadow. I'm just taking a mask on it, brushing with black. And now we can kind of get a more gradual fade for this inner glow. And honestly, if we want to take it a step further, you could also add a curves adjustment layer bring everything down and we can invert this mask with command I and again, just start brushing near the shadow. We're gonna brush in white and we'll just kind of darken the parts that are closer to the ground essentially and keep selling this idea that there is light in our scene that is somewhat accurately affecting our player cutout. Last few things, we're gonna add this overall glued paper texture. I believe I got this from Adobe's free stock collection. I'm just gonna drag this in and set the blend mode to multiply. I don't want it to have such an extreme effect. I like how it's, it's going over the text and kind of gives the text a funky feel, but let's put a mask on it and take a black brush with like relatively low flow and just make it less of an effect here at the bottom of the design. Just cause I don't like when it's like, if I didn't have any mask on, the shadow doesn't really go with the way the paper is glued. So I'm just gonna try to make that a little bit less obvious and make it feel like more of a, a platform that our cutouts are standing on. And we can lower the opacity maybe to 75%. Maybe our last step, let's make a new layer and command option shift E is gonna apply the image as we're looking at it onto its own layer. Let's go up to filter, convert for smart filters, filter, camera raw filter. This is gonna allow us to just do some master adjustments within camera raw filter to our design. So any sort of lighting adjustments we wanna do, I, ooh, I do like boosting the shadows a little bit, but just kind of adding a little bit more brightness and maybe some more texture and clarity is okay. Could also do some noise reduction and really give it like a, a smoother feel on these cutouts. That's kind of nice. And then I would generally add some grain just a little bit at the end of your designs. Kind of helps blend everything together. And of course, any other color adjustments you want to make, we could play with the temperature. We could cool this thing off a little bit just because we have this blue wind chill vibe to the thing. Negative eight feels okay. Saturation, I think I like it about there. I do like how the skin tones really pop in this design. Everything else is relatively monochrome with just this, this light 
soft blue, but I think it helps really draw you in to our main subjects. Last thing I'm gonna do is add a bit of a matte finish to this whole thing. So let's drop a curves adjustment layer in. Let's click on some points along this diagonal and just lift up these black values. Very subtle. You can see it's really just affecting the player cutouts because that's where our darkest blacks are. Gives a nice effect to the whole design without being too aggressive. So that's gonna do it for today's very simple, basic game day poster design. You don't have to do too much to make a compelling graphic. I think just proper arrangement of text, typography, hierarchy, and then placing a good player image. This cutout obviously does a lot of the heavy lifting of this design, and if it wasn't as good of a photo, this design would definitely not look as good. So always keep in mind photo selection when you're making these types of posters where it's kind of one featured cutout. Thanks for watching as always, and let me know if you have any questions.